Hi folks, Ken Everett here from Digital Matter. I'm really excited today to be announcing our new Barrow range of devices. The Barrow range is really aimed at getting down to the lowest possible cost in terms of an IoT asset tracking device on cellular at scale. Uh, this is a new product lineup, so um, uh, a bit of legal. So what I want to dive into is why the Barra, why are we doing it? So it's really building on this like best of breed we've got in terms of our Edge products that we've got at the moment, Yabby Edge, Oyster Edge, and then our GPS devices as well. Really the bottom line is we set about saying we've got use cases where we want to track everything. So how do we get the price point down to a level where it becomes justifiable to put this onto something as low cost as a pallet? Um, so really the Barra range is about targeting those kind of assets, pallets and returnable packaging, uh, concealed asset recovery where you want a device that you can hide somewhere, things like shopping carts and trolleys, and I, you name it, right? There's a whole long list of assets that you want to track where the device needs to be small enough and low cost enough that uh, you can justify sticking it on that asset. So the design goals in terms of the Barra family was really about getting to the lowest price point. The other important thing for us, and it's one of the differentiators around the digital matter range, is that we, we get to what we call deploy once battery life. So in our opinion, if you're going to stick a device onto any kind of asset and track it, you want the battery life to last for the length of time that you need to track the asset for. And invariably with things like pallets in the supply chain, you're talking about five years plus, right? And you'll see with some of the battery life we get off the barrow, we're even talking five to 10 years, depending on how you set the device up. You know, that is in comparison to things like rechargeable trackers that we see on the market. Can you imagine the logistics around going out and trying to recharge 10,000 trackers that you've got on your assets every six months to keep them running? Um, logistical nightmare. So that was one of the target um, uh, design goals. The other thing we, we did with the Barra form factor is to get it lower profile. So really trying to get it so it could fit on something like a pallet, uh, certainly a very rugged housing so it can survive any kind of knocks and bashes. And then of course the performance just goes without saying. Everything we do at Digital Matter is about making sure our devices are the utmost best quality and we really pay attention to detail around squeezing and fine tuning the device to get the best possible performance. The other thing we've taken a look at with the Barrow range is about how easy it is to provision and deploy these devices at scale. And you'll see we've incorporated a little magnet on the base of the device which in the first instance acts as an activation switch so you can pre-provision devices with batteries, SIM cards, seal them up and have them sitting dormant on the shelf until you pull the magnet off, in which case they activate. So quite important, we're hearing that from a lot of our customers that want to mass provision devices and have them ready to go. And even ship them directly to end customers who all they have to do is remove the magnet and the device then activates. So the other thing about the Barrow range is really about getting to a point where it's easier to justify for a client the return on investment they're going to get out of tracking that asset, right? Uh, versus um, some of these kind of smart labels we see being talked about in the market where you're really talking about the same price for a tracking device, but it's use it once on the on the thing for a couple of weeks and you're throwing it away. Um, so really the, the barrow range is about a different view of logistics in terms of being able to reuse these devices. So the Barra series itself, I've mentioned already, but the, the profile of the device you can see here uh, is lower profile compared to our Oyster and our typical Yabbies. What we've done is we've moved the batteries out from under the PCB to be alongside. And that's allowed us to do a couple of smart things. It gives us a bit more space on the PCB to be double-sided in terms of um, component placement, but it also allows us to put that magnet underneath that I mentioned. So that is used for both activation and it can be used for tamper detection as well. Um, the other thing it's allowed us to do is incorporate the battery holder into the housing. So that makes it super rugged and more reliable and obviously helps us get the cost down. And the other thing is you'll see here we've designed it for two AA batteries. So our Yabby series historically has used three AAA batteries. So with two AA's you actually get greater battery capacity um, and we've also uh, allowed or designed it so it'll run off alkaline batteries or energizer lithiums. So energizer lithiums will give you just that slightly longer and better performance, but alkaline is certainly way cheaper. So um, there's a boost regulator on the design, so that basically will work off alkaline even as they, they go down in voltage as they get older. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it gives us a little bit more capacity from a battery life perspective, and you'll see some of the numbers. So the housing itself is really rugged. You can see uh, in the image there, 
There's a little honeycomb structure along the inside of the housing, and that's something we're incorporating on our new housings. Really gives the housing a very rugged um, and um, firm uh, feel about it. And we've got two housing options. The one we call the screw together housing, which by definition is screwed together. And then we've also got a snap housing, which really was designed for uh, sealing once in a very easy and quick uh, manner and deploying into the field. So with the Barra family, we're announcing today three product variations. We do have a, more, a few more coming, but uh, that's for another discussion at a later stage. Um, the first is what we call our Barra Core uh, MB, and that's targeting the lowest possible cost we can get to at this stage for a cellular-based tracking device. Uh, the Barra Edge, which builds on our historical Edge technology in the Yabby and the Oyster Edge, that does indoor-outdoor tracking, and the Barra GPS doing outdoor tracking. And I'll dive into a little bit of detail on each of those. So the Barra Core was we set about going, this was the first product we looked at, and it was like, how do we get the cost down to the absolute minimum? And to be quite frank, one of the things we wanted to do was get down to the, the price point of a, let's call it a decent Bluetooth tag, right? Which um, uh, Bluetooth tags are interesting. They're being used for, for tracking lower cost assets at the moment. The problem with them is they need to be in range of a gateway, right? So whether that's a, a handheld device or some kind of gateway reader, as soon as your asset goes out of range of those things, you lose sight of them. So that's, in, our, in my belief, the, the cellular-based tracking devices give you far more flexibility and power in terms of where your asset is and visibility across the supply chain without you having to control or install infrastructure to read, for example, Bluetooth tags. The other thing about Bluetooth tags, by the way, is typically that coin cell is going to give you, you know, maybe it's a year, maybe a slightly longer if you if you push the settings out somewhat. But, you know, I don't want to be changing 10,000 batteries in, in assets out in the field after 18 months or two years even, right? So the deploy once battery life we get on the Barra is really important from that, that perspective. So what we set about with the Barra Core is how do we get the price point really, really bottom uh, of the market? Uh, and we, we went with an MBIT only modem from Quicktel, the BC660K, and we're putting our code on the chipset on the, on the module, right? So that means we don't have to have an external microcontroller. So again, we've really just aimed at keeping the bill of materials price down as low as possible. The device does Wi-Fi access point scanning. So that gives you indoor location and let's call it metro outdoor, right? So you need to be in range of uh, one or two access points at a minimum. and the, the Wi-Fi access point scanning will give you a location. Uh, we also fall back to cell tower location. Um, so if you're in range of a cell tower, you'll get an approximate location, but typically you know, that's a kilometer or two in terms of accuracy, but it gives you an idea whether your package is in city A or city B, for example. Uh, the device has an accelerometer on there, which is pretty standard across our products. So we use it intelligently to detect movement if that's what you want. So you can have variable parameters as to how the device is being tracked when it's moving versus stationary. And then also we do high G detection. I mentioned already the magnets. So the device has a magnet underneath for activation and tamper. And again, the battery choices that you have, right, make it quite nice and flexible. So the thing about the Barra Core to realize is it's the lowest cost version of the Barra family, but it's MBIT only and it's Wi-Fi scanning, no GNSS in there, right? So that works well for supply chain, pallet type tracking, obviously in a metro area or somewhere where you've got Wi-Fi access points, or if you're happy to fall back to cellular in uh, more rural areas, that's also fine. And it has a quick tail modem in there. So, you know, the reason why I'm mentioning that is certain markets are quite sensitive at the moment around where the modem and where the modem technology comes from. So just bear that in mind. The Barra Edge uh, is our uh, product that's using the Edge technology in the Barra range. Uh, it is low cost, and again, it's still priced very competitively compared to some, some of the decent Bluetooth tags out there in the market. This is using our Nordic modem that we make use of in a lot of our products, and that does both LTM or CADM1, as we call it, and MBIT. So more flexibility in terms of the, the network choices that you've got. And it's also got the full edge technology, as we like to call it. So that does Genesis scanning. So if you're outdoors and you've got a reasonable view of the sky, you will get a GPS position that's within a couple of meters accurate, typically. Um, it does fall back to Wi-Fi access point scanning. So if you're indoors and you can see access points, you will get a location. And then we've got ultimately cell tower fallback as well. So three location technologies built into the device. The accelerometer is very similar to uh, all of our products that have an accelerometer in it movement tracking, high G, and then on the on the Barra Edge, we've also ported across some of the other features. So um, things like orientation and other features on there. The magnet is on this device as well. That's common across all the Barra family. 
and then also the option around alkaline or energizer lithium batteries so flexibility around the batteries so really the barra edge message is if you need something that's going to give you um, gps tracking uh, when the device is outdoors but also falling back to wi-fi indoors uh, if you need the modem uh, that is going to give you both cat m1 and mbit but still give you great um, a power profile and um, uh, the the option we have at the bottom there is around Bluetooth beaconing. That is something that we're working on from an R&D perspective at the moment. Um, so we will be looking at that in future to allow this device to actually do Bluetooth beaconing for location within inside uh, warehouses. The Barra GPS is the third device in the family. Um, this is one we've got in prototype at the moment. So it's coming hot on the heels of the other two. That has the Nordic modem in there. So as I mentioned, so that's LTM, cat M1, MBIT. So good for roaming in places across Europe where you don't have common uh, footprint of both CADM and MBIT in countries. It has a full multi-constellation GNSS in there. So we do hear from some of our customers, they want a, let's call it a full GPS, full GNSS on the device, right? To give them as accurate tracking as they can in an outdoor scenario. Um, so that is concurrent, uh, four constellations. Uh, so the more satellites you, you support, the, the more likely you are to get a fix and the quicker you're going to get that fix and the less energy you're going to have to consume to get that fix. Um, we're also smart about how we do things on this device. Genesis aiding data is a feature across all of our products. Um, this is data that gets downloaded via the cellular network onto the device periodically, typically once a week. And that really allows the device to get a fix really quickly. And in battery powered devices, that's, that's critical. It, it really means Instead of spending 30, 40 seconds looking for satellites under a cold start condition, you're getting a fix in five to 10 seconds, typically using the Genesis adding data where um, we can leverage off that information. Again, the, the device is cell tower location fallback. It's got the accelerometer like the other devices, the magnet and the alkaline and energizer lithium 1.5 volt batteries. So similar features across the family from that point of view, it typically boils down to the type of modem and the location technology that's been used in the device. So the Barra GPS is great for low power outdoor location. So if you've got assets that you know are pretty much staying outside like construction equipment or containers or bigger items, this is a great product for that. And you want the accuracy of the full GNSS solution. Um, so we've, we've got the, the modem that supports roaming across LTM and MB in there. And really, as I've mentioned, the, the use case is accurate location for outdoor assets. So the deploy once battery life is worth talking about. I mentioned it earlier but it really supports mass deployments. And the aim of this device is you don't want to be doing any manual recharging or battery changes. Stick the thing on the asset, it must last for the lifetime of the asset. Now, we've got a finite amount of energy in the battery, so it really boils down to how smart can we be about how we use that energy. And you'll see a table there on the slide. You know, if you're doing a single position a day, for example, across the barrier edge, as, a, as an example, you're going to get 10 plus years. Now, to be honest, 10 plus years to me sounds it's just so far into the future. It's like, well, what's the technology going to be like then? But the point to take away from this is that we've got the, the low power performance and the battery capacity to allow you to do more with the device. So, so if you want to do two pings a day, you want to do six pings a day, you want to do movement based tracking, you really want to smash the thing hard because you, you are doing a package tracking and you might just be using it for two or three weeks, by all means, crank the data rate right up. And use alkaline batteries, which are much, much cheaper, right? Because you know you're only needing them to operate for a couple of weeks. And so it really depends on your use cases, what you want to do. But the flexibility, I guess, that we're giving you allows you to pretty much tackle any use case that you might come up with. Um, and the screw together housing makes it easy, right? You can open that thing up, change the batteries. They're, they're off the shelf batteries and uh, you're good to go again. And obviously using the magnet to activate, deactivate, you can use it as like an on off switch if you need to. So, so even things like um, we've got a customer that's looking to tracking paddlers in uh, kayak races, you know, um, Barra GPS, perfect for that. So the market opportunities, um, you know, I probably don't need to tell you about what your market opportunities are. Every one of our customers is different and they have different use cases. And our resellers are looking at all sorts of different markets that we don't even often know about. But typically the Barra family is aimed at this low to mid value asset tracking and recovery. Um, so really getting the price point to a level where it, it gives you an ROI to stick this on pretty much anything, right? And if you've got 100,000 assets, come and chat to us. We'd love to give you a special deal. Um, so existing solutions are typically cost prohibitive in this market, and we're really doing what we can to drive that price point down. 
So, you know, there's a long list of, of opportunities and that low profile form factor obviously plays into things like supply chain and logistics, pallets, cargo, trolleys, packaging, equipment, tools, you name it, right? Um, there's a huge long list and I'm sure you're going to come up with some that I haven't even thought of. Right? So, so go for it. I think the takeaway from us is that uh, we, we, I'm really excited. It's a great product family. Uh, we're going to be doing more in this space. I shouldn't be saying it, but we, we have plans for a satellite version and a few other things coming. Um, the core and the edge evaluations are happening as we speak. We've got um, stock of the edge coming. Uh, the production run is literally happening in the next week or so. We'll have stock in, in our offices early October, and the GPS version is in prototype and evaluation right now. So by all means, get hold of your local DM office, have a chat to your, to your local representatives, and um, put your name down to get some of these units and try it out. I really encourage you to try uh, the whole range, in fact, um, and figure out which one is ideal for which suitcase that, uh, use case that you're looking for. Uh, thanks very much for listening, and I look forward to doing some great business with you. Cheers.